Hi, I'm George Kay and this is my father Niels. Welcome back to Father and Synthesizer. Today we talk about a new project we're actually working on. And that's going to be a sample player for the modular synthesizer for our generative rack. And for now the samples we're using are based on the Roland TR626, which is kind of a digital version, a digital mashup of the 606 and 505. So before we uh, bore you with more of the details, let's, uh, sh let's show you the sound demo. So, what we have right here is the wavetable synthesizer. We've uh, talked about that one a few episodes ago. And we also have the function generator, uh, which is right now running the code for the drum sample player. So let's hear a few sounds. This is the kick drum. Please note the clicking. This is fairly subtle, but there's a, de a definite click to it. Yeah, we haven't figured out how to solve that yet. It's, it's there, we might have to replace the sample. So that's uh, the basic drum sound. And we've got some toms as well. See, they also click a little still. We st well, we're still working on this. This is still very much work in progress. Yeah, without further ado, let's listen to a little song I did. It's um, with the wavetable synthesizer as all of the main sound sources and the uh, sample player for all the drums. They're getting d mixed in my uh, mixer analog and uh, then going directly into Logic. So let's have a go at that. Now, why did we build this machine? Why did we build it with these samples? Uh, that was more or less an accident, actually. While I was surfing the internet, I came upon a site where uh, you could download the ROM from the TR626. And that intrigued me. So what can we do with that? What was my thought? What I did is I wrote a small Java program that reads out the ROM and uh, converts it to a WAV file so I could listen to what is actually in there and uh, second I uh, created a uh, include that tile for the STM of each of the voices in there. Now the next step was to get, take the STM and write a program that reads out the ROM content and makes it audible. The sample player idea was born. And uh, what we built here is uh, purely a proof of concept. It's not going to be the finished module. We're still going to be working on that for a while. Indeed. Because this is just the basic idea. We can play back a sample polyphonically with, uh, with velocity and dynamics to show uh, that we can make a drum machine or something with this. Mm -hmm. So what I did was um, <clears throat> I abused the essential um, function generator module and we talked about that a few episodes ago indeed and I, I loaded the code onto that so that's why in the demo you saw the uh, function generator playing the drums the way we, we loaded the samples onto the SCM was to uh, load the, the include files into the program memory of the SCM because that is limited uh, not all of the samples from the TR626 fit into one SDM chip. So, um, um, so we split that into three different versions, program versions, that uh, is switchable in the code. And what George was demonstrating to you was chip number one. So there is a selected set of drums on that chip. Now let's talk about the problems we had while we built this. Because the majority of the bug fixing and getting ready was done on the uh, Saturday, <laughs> in, a rush, in one rush afternoon. Yes. The samples played fine, yeah. Beautiful. But and even the MIDI implementation worked fairly, fairly from quickly. From scratch, yes. But 
at the end of the sample you could hear a click and that was something we were f familiar with from the wavetable synthesizer yeah, as we well. talked about that exact same thing last week yes well, so this was kind of frustrating <laughs> yeah um, we analyzed the problem and found that uh, well we would build in a um, decay close to the end of the sample so let the the sample decay smoothly down to zero I built that in and surprisingly it did not work finally we hooked the oscilloscope to the output and there you could see that when you play more than one voice the the voices jump up yeah they stack on top of each other yeah so what was the problem well um, I was expecting that the ROM would do samples plus minus the zero line and that is um, probably true but the way I read it from memory was different I was using an, uh, an unsigned byte where you should use an, a signed byte so I reprogrammed that part so that each sample now plays plus minus the zero line and only in the final step we add um, a 5 volt amplitude, so half of the output amplitude to the sample playing. Because with the PWM output you can only get uh, 0 to 10 volts, you can't go into the you negatives. You can't go negative. And uh, once that was built in, beautiful. No clicking anymore. Well, except for the bass drum, which we still haven't figured out why it's clicking. Yeah, we probably have to replace the bass drum yeah. uh, with our own sample. But You've heard it in the, the demo, it, it isn't that bad. You can live with it. Now, what are our future plans for this module? Because um, while we are working on another secret drum project, which we're probably going to present next week, this is going to be the bread and butter type of drums. This is going to be the cornerstone for drums. If you need a reliable kick drum, this is going to be the one. Yeah, so our ideas were, why not add all three chips together on one module, so that you have most of the uh, original TR 626 drum set available. Then we built an output mixer for all three modules. We will have three volume potentiometers so you can uh, decrease and increase Certainly. whole groups of, of instruments that are similar. Like uh, you give an example. Yeah, for example, uh, all of the kick drums and toms will be grouped into one, and the snare and claps will be one, and then the metals like the cymbals and the hi hats will be in one group. Then so you can yeah, you can also individually turn them down if you don't need them. The next thing um, we want to add is a another potentiometer, um, so you can detune um, the samples. The samples, so you play them a little bit faster or a little bit th slower. Probably slower, because that usually sounds cooler. <laughs> we'll see. And then we'll add... Um, yeah, we're going to add another potentiometer for a filter, which if, if the potentiometer is set to the middle, the filter is turned off. But if you turn it to the left, uh, you engage the low-pass filter, and to the right you engage the high-pass filter. Mm -hmm. That's something, a byproduct from our other secret drum project. <laughs> You're going to like that one. Oh yeah. We also want to include the ability to load other samples than the 626 ROMs on there. And uh, for that you have something special planned, haven't you? Yeah, you may know or may not. I'm also uh, a professional Java programmer. So I want to build a Java application where you can drag and drop a wave sample you got from whatever source. And, and uh, for that I have to uh, note something. This doesn't seem to work with wave files exported from Logic. We've had that uh, issue f f before a few times. You have to throw them into Audacity and just save them as a wave from there. I don't know why, I don't know where to change the setting, but uh, if you're ever stuck with wave files from Logic that don't work somewhere, just toss them into Audacity first and try again. The reason probably is there's a, a whole bunch of different wave formats. And for our purpose only, um, a wave format is possible that stores each sample in an 8-bit value. No differential values at all. So, well, as I was about to explain, you drop the WAV file onto the uh, application and it generates a include file for the SCM. In the same uh, folder as the WAV file. So yeah. you just toss it in, you get the .h file. Right. And then you just go into the source code and include that file and in the MIDI decision table what mode to play, you add your own drum and so on. Yeah, oh, it doesn't have to be a drum sample, it, it can be anything. Oh, no. 
can be anything. As long as it's uh, short and small. It should fit into the memory. <laughs> yeah. Then um, thank you again for all the comments we got last week and the yeah. week before. We had so many comments on the Wavetable Synthesizer and that just, it fills us with, with joy. It makes all of this worth it. It, makes, it keeps us yeah. going, making this, these videos. It was a great experience. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, again, thank you for watching this far and I hope you're having a nice day. See you again in two weeks and remember, stay, stay curious. curious.